Hey, welcome to the Carol Remarks Podcast. My name is Carol, and this is where I host my remarks on glamour, pop culture, and front page news. Let's get right to it. Good morning. Oh, happy day. It's Tuesday. Welcome, everyone. My name is Carol. Glad you are here. All right, I have made it through my colonoscopy, and y'all were right. It was not a big deal. I should have listened to everyone, but no, I had to work myself up and get all nervous and worried about it. <laughs> it was so funny. The prep was not bad at all. I don't know why people are saying the prep was the worst. To me, I did not have a difficult time with it. I was prescribed um, a brand called Suflave, S-U-F-L-A-V-E, something like that. And it was decent. It wasn't too terrible. Um, and I stayed by the bathroom. I mean, I did not have anything major happen. You know, it was all right. It was not bad. It was easy peasy for me. Uh, but anyway, it's so funny because I was so nervous about being put under because I, you know, I've had some heart issues recently, but it's, it seems to be all working out or I thought I had some, well, I did have some, I had AFib and I was, you know, it kind of freaks me out your heart and everything. Um, so I was a little nervous about being put under, but anyway, we get back there and she puts, you know, every, you, know you know, the whole hooking up and all with the monitors, you know how it goes. So, you know, they, they say, okay, Miss Marshall, we'll put you on your side. So they put me on my side. They made sure I was comfortable. And then next thing I know, I wake up in the recovery room. That's it. That's it. I remember nothing. <laughs> I don't even remember going to sleep. All I remember, the last thing I remember was being on my side. They, you know, adjusted my pillow so I could be a little bit more comfortable. And then I wake up in the recovery room. Same position, too, by the way. I wake up. It's so funny. Anyway. Anyway. Oh, my gosh. I said, anyway. I got to stop being like Joe Biden and saying, anyway. When I finish a thought, I need a different transition word. It's not that I come up against a wall like he does. It's just I've finished the story. And I don't know how to transition to the next all right. The other thing, well, I guess I could go on and go and tell you about, let's go ahead and go to the X file. So this, I'm not going to read this story. I'm just going to read the headline. It's out there on my X file. It's a weird story. It's a heartbreaking story. Uh, Mom's heartbreaking last words as she died from poison mushroom in sushi roll. I'm not sure I can go on much longer. I love you. And she couldn't talk, I guess, because of her throat. Uh, be, it was, she was 64 years old. She had so much pain from eating this sushi with the poison mushroom that was imported by China, by the way. I don't, oh, it's a Montana woman who met a prolonged and painful death after eating poisonous mushrooms from China at a sushi restaurant, spent her final days telling her loved ones, I'm not sure I can go on much longer. Her heartbroken husband has revealed. You can go uh, and finish reading that. It was here in America, but she ate uh, oh my gosh. So she ate these mushrooms that were in the sushi, and I guess the mushrooms were poisonous, and they were imported from China. So there you go. You can go finish reading that story. The next one I want to, I'm not, uh, let's see, do I want to read this? No. The next one I want to talk about, but you're going to, um, it's out on my X file. Oh my gosh, I wish I could talk today, y'all. Judge declares mistrial in case of Arizona rancher charged with murder of Mexican national on border property. Why are they calling them Mexi Mexican nationals? They make them, when you say Mexican national, it makes them sound like they're important. Like they're, like they're from the Mexican government or something. This person, I guess, was on this man's rancher's property crossing the border. <sighs> I think you've heard of this before. This, this, I've heard briefly about this particular case, and they have a picture of the rancher standing there in handcuffs with a bulletproof, uh, with a vest, you know, orange jumper. It's horrible. Why the, I, did they have him arrested? And was he stayed in prison this whole time until his trial? I don't know. A jury was unable to reach a verdict in the case of Arizona rancher George Allen Kelly who was accused of second-degree murder in connection to the death of a Mexican national found fatally shot on the on his borderland ranch in January of 2023. You can go read that story. Um, maybe the new, maybe I'm hoping Pat Gray will 
talk about it a little bit. We'll see. All right, so the next thing, medical shuns gender, gender transition. Oh my gosh. Medicine shuns gender detransitioners like me, but we deserve to be heard and helped. From the New York Post, written by Chloe Cole. And I think Chloe Cole is the, de I've heard of this name. I think she is the detransitioner who wrote this piece for the New York Post. She says, when I was 12, I tried to transition my gender. At 12 years old, y'all, everyone supported me. Therapists told me I was doing the right thing. Doctors put me on puberty blockers and then cross-sex hormones before cutting off my breasts, a double mastectomy. My parents' health insurance covered everything. The medical establishment believed I should transition based on the idea of gender-affirming care. Gender affirming care is child abuse. Um, we need to rename it. We need to use the correct terminology and stop caving in to these people who start, you know, gender dysphoria, by the way, didn't always, wasn't always called gender dysphoria. And it is a mental illness. It is. And it used to be called um, gender, disor gender disorder and before that something else. But it is a mental disorder. So, the message I got was loud and clear. Trans transitioning was the best decision I'd ever made. At 16, I realized I made a mistake. I wanted to turn back, to detransition, to be the girl I've always been. But as soon as I said that, no one supported me anymore. The therapists, they told me I was confused, that I was just on a gender journey. <sighs> the doctors... They didn't want to provide the treatments and procedures to reverse what they'd done. They looked at me like I was crazy, like I was asking for something totally outside the bounds of medicine. And while they wouldn't talk to me either, after a while they wouldn't talk to me either. My parents' health insurance, it wouldn't cover a penny of my detransition. De it, it was happy to pay for cutting off my breast, but not reconstructive surgery. It wouldn't even cover mental health care. Huh. Interesting. My parents and I are on the hook for tens of thousands of dollars for the care I need with no end in sight. Everywhere I turned, the medical establishment effectively told me detransitioning isn't real or doesn't matter. <clears throat> this is the dark side of gender affirming care. It only affirms in one direction. If you want to change genders, great. If you regret your decision, too bad. Well, you know, maybe this is why we need to wait and let the children grow out of it. Hello. I, I'm not going to read the rest of it, but I do suggest you, you do it. You go read the rest of it. The next story I want to touch on is uh, written by Susan Edelman and hold on. I got to open the app here and oh my gosh, Deidre Bardolph. This is a little bit long. I'm going to try to make it short. A little, okay. Parent members of a Manhattan school board who support a public review of the city's decision to let transgender athletes play in female sports have faced a backlash in their professional and personal lives, they told the Post. So there's a group of parents who do not agree that or they want they want it investigated further about allowing transgen allowing men, boys to play on the girls teams. I have to stop using the word transgender because there's no such thing. It's just boys pretending to be girls wanting to play in the girls sports. The Community Education Council for District 2, the city's largest neighborhood school board passed a controversial and highly publicized resolution last month calling for the study with a vote of eight to three. Since then, several of the eight members who voted yes say they've been targeted in person at work and where they volunteer. I have personally been sworn at in the street, slandered at my workplace, and vilified online, CEC2 member of Allison Bowman told The Post. Bowman was questioned by the legal 
counsel at her real estate job after an anonymous commenter on X attacked her in reply to her company's post recognizing Pride Month. Seems a little off-brand to have one of your top employees, Allison Bowman, go co-sponsoring an anti-trans resolution, the New York Mama, Mama Page blasted. I mean, this is what these people do. You speak out against what you know is right and true, and then the people who are lunatics attack you personally, professionally. And then this is why people are afraid to speak out. I want you to go finish reading that story. I also would like for you to subscribe to Kelly J. Keene's YouTube channel and start watching her videos. Start with the one called Ultras Assemble. She goes through the White House, Biden's administration staff, uh, with the trans. There's a lot of them in there. A lot of trans, a lot of men wearing women's dresses in the Biden administration. It is terrifying. Please go watch that video. It's, I don't know how long it is. Maybe 50, it's, it's, I guess it's pretty long. But if you start at like the 15 minute mark, something like that. Now she does, Kelly J is a British women's rights activist. She is not a feminist. She says she's not a feminist. Which personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with being the feminist of the olden days. <laughs> but I understand the word feminism and that group has been taken over by a fringe, crazy group of women, which I don't want to be associated with. So I understand why she doesn't want to call herself a feminist. So she's a women's right activist and she's in Britain and she started a party of a political party. She has officially started a political party called the Party of Women and she has uh, put forth candidates. Candidates are coming forth under this, under the umbrella of the Party of Women and good for her. I wish we could do something like it that here in the United States. We need a good women's rights activist here in the United States. I wish somebody would step up and do it. But, you know, people are too afraid because it, of being um, attacked and losing their job. So we need a high profile, Megan Kelly, voice to do that. But Megan Kelly already has a job. So, you know, we need an activist. We need, an, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I wish we could, we just need a, we need a grassroots effort. I need some people to help me join me and help and just talk about this. I know it's terrifying because it, it it seems to be against us here with, you know, the Title IX and the way they have propped up all of these men pretending to be women, using language like transgender women and making it sound soft and easy and nice and, you know, love and tolerance. It's, no, no, I do not want a man walking up in my bathroom. I mean, I don't play sports. I don't have to worry about that, thank goodness. But that doesn't mean I can sit on the sidelines and be quiet and not help talk about this. All right. Question of the day. Before we get to the question of the day, please go visit GiveMeLibertyMedia.com. It's a new group of us uh, podcasters banding together and, you know, trying to grow our presence out there. It's Adrian Slade. It's fake Tyler Morgan. I don't know why I have to put fake Tyler Morgan on the front of that. And John from Brutally Honest Podcast and myself. So right now, there's just the four of us. Um, so go check that out. We, we do have a website. It's called GiveMeLibertyMedia.com. And I need to add that into my description probably. And maybe create a new bumper for the entrance. But... We hope, we have, like I said, we have a website. We hope to be uh, putting more information out on the website as well as our podcast. Okay. Uh, and I, as you can tell, I am trying to be more focused on women's issues here on the podcast and on my blog. I recently wrote a post about the government co coming after your children um, and starring Dick Levine. So please go read that. I would appreciate your comments too. Maybe share them out on your social media platforms if you would. All right, question of the day. What is your dream car? If you could, if money was not an issue, 
what kind of car would you like to have? I'm not sure what kind of car I'd like to have. I know when I had my BMW 4 Series, I loved that car. And I felt really safe in it. it. And it is the ultimate driving machine. I used to think that was a bunch of hype until I went to work for them and sold them. I used to sell BMWs. Loved the car. I don't know that that would be my dream car because the 4 Series was awfully small. It's for the young people getting up in and out of it. And I don't really care for their SUVs. I mean, their SUVs are okay. I just didn't. I just, I don't know. I don't care for their SUVs. I like their 4 Series, though. That's pretty spiffy. I don't know, though. I, I don't know what kind of ultimate car I would like to have. I'm not, I hate to say this, but I'm a chick. I'm not really into cars, so I don't know. <laughs> But that's my question for you. What is your ultimate dream car? Maybe a muscle car? I don't know that I'd like that either. A truck? Maybe. I don't know. i tell you what I did. I drove a Porsche once just to test drive it when I was working at the dealership. And those were pretty nice. But I don't know that I'd like that either. A lot of maintenance on that. No. You know, maybe like a... a I don't know. Maybe... <laughs> like a stick shift one of the old timey cars old timey cars and i can drive one by the way all right i don't know what's your dream car thanks for listening to oh and also thank you all so much for your prayers for yesterday for my colonoscopy thank you so much for your prayers your thoughts your funny quips i appreciate it i, I appreciate everything thank you thank you thank you so much y'all have a great tuesday thanks for listening What's that? Who pays your salary? What's that? Who pays? What's that? We're not a democracy!